And then there are these rumors that the first family was considering adopting a cat. Oh, yes, is and that, that is true. Can yes. you confirm that? He's waiting in the wings. She, she is waiting in the wings. Was this your idea, Mr. President? No, <laughs> but it's easy. He doesn't know what a cat is. <laughs> Keep clapping. What's your problem? All right, the thing about rebellion, much like doing whippets, it's only fun in small bursts. Let it go unheeded or even sympathize with it, it only grows. And like my bikini line during lockdown, it turns on you. <laughs> Reminds me of the time I rescued a poor kitten outside my apartment, only to learn a few months later it was a raccoon. <laughs> Whatever was initially adorable, now evil. It's like relationships. Some women date the bad boy with the face tattoo because he's fun and dangerous. But it's not fun a year later when he sold all your furniture and he's passed out in your living room, which is also where he keeps his bike and his meth lab. <laughs> which brings us to Antifa and Ted Wheeler, the mayor of Portland, Oregon. Last July, he stood with rioters after 100 nights of mayhem, or as CNN called it, peaceful protesting. As they tried to injure the police, he tried to play the hip stepdad, promising he'll buy you beer if you promise to drink it at home. I stand with you no matter what. And if they launch the tear gas against you, they are launching the tear gas against me. Mm, to save his thin white skin, there he was standing side by side with nuts as if he was competing in the three-legged race at a Manson family reunion. <laughs> and yet they kept rioting. Remember, it was Wheeler who rejected help from the Trump White House and slammed those who wanted to restore law and order to a once great city. The words and actions from President Trump and the Department of Homeland Security have shown that this is an attack on our democracy. Keep your troops in your own buildings or have them leave our city. Okay, Braveheart. <laughs> yeah, how brave is that, rejecting life-saving help from Trump just so you can maintain street cred with the scum? And yet the rioting didn't stop. So what did the mayor do next? The same thing a month later. I'm going to do the work that I need to do here in my local community with my local officials to take accountability for what's happening on our streets. And I'd appreciate that either the president support us or he stay the hell out of the way. Mm. Well, like Charlie Sheen's teeth, that has not aged well. <laughs> now, a year later, even a dumbass like Wheeler would realize he chose the wrong allies. Who knew you couldn't trust a bunch of angry dweebs wrapped in bandanas torching buildings while roaming the streets playing Pokemon Go? His new friends even showed, up, showed their respect by chasing him out of his very own apartment. But Wheeler thought, hey, maybe if I pet the crocodile, the reptile won't eat me. Not so, they continued. I know, you'd think anarchists would listen to the pleadings of a weak mayor who seems more at home teaching massage therapy at a strip mall than running a city. So finally, like a mob rat working with the FBI, he announced he needed help getting his old allies arrested and unmasked and asked the public to get their names and license plates to do the work that he refused to do. Our job is to unmask them, arrest them, and prosecute them. These people often arrive at their so-called direct actions in cars, and they're all dressed in all black. If you see this, call the police. If you can provide a license plate, if you can do so safely, that information can help later. Uh, okay, Rambo. <laughs> so now he wants citizens to risk their lives as if he'd back them up when the <laughs> hits the fan. But we've already seen how he turned his back on the cops. But no surprise, Antifa still went on damaging schools and churches and, of course, their chances of ever having success in life. And now they release a video in which not only do they dox the mayor, they threaten to kill him. Ted, we are asking for the last time that you resign. If you ignore this message outright, the destruction to your precious way of life is going to escalate. Blood is already on your hands, Ted. But next time, 
it may just be your own. You know, I know that's supposed to sound scary, but you know the person behind that phony voice is a Dorito-stained blob who had to peel himself from his gaming chair for the first time in months. And maybe that is his real voice. He's just breathing heavy from standing up too fast. He likely has a hygiene problem because he only showers once every moon phase. Still, they threaten a political leader with death. Then again, so did Madonna and Johnny Depp, and it didn't really matter, but it should. But they're now threatening a Democrat, so maybe it might matter for once. I suppose you would call this terrorism, but they aren't Trump supporters or white supremacists. Sorry, that's redundant, according to the media. <laughs> By the way, if you want to see white terrorists, take a look at the mugshots of Portland rioters. Even for a city that's 75% white, they're suspiciously pasty. Apparently, student loan debt causes green hair and acne. I'm starting to think the cure for Antifa is getting laid. So I get no joy over Wheeler being threatened, and I hope he learns something from this, other than that it's not appropriate to wear a cardigan to a riot. But maybe you should side with the citizens before you side with those who want to hurt them. This is on page two of How to Be a Mayor Handbook. You thought that by courting the barbarians, they would stop at the gate. They didn't. They correctly surmised you had less balls than a bodybuilder on steroids. <laughs> and they ran you into the ground like a rental car. That's what happens when you pretend that you could be a mayor of a city, but you look like you're suited to be manager at Circuit City. So we're here for you, Ted. You need help. America's got you, even if you don't get us. Tonight's guest. They created a morning show to make him think he has friends. Fox and Friends co-host Brian Kilmeade. She's the only Kennedy we trust for a ride home. Host of Kennedy on Fox Business Network, Kennedy. He's so smart, Einstein copied his homework. Former White House Press Secretary and Fox News contributor, Ari Fletcher. And every picture of him is the big picture. My massive sidekick and host of Not Set on Fox Nation, Tyrus. Woo! So, Brian, uh, you've been a long standing supporter of Antifa for years. <laughs> right. Uh, I bet you feel pretty gross right now. All right, I regret uh, if I had to pick a terror organization, I picked the wrong one. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I found out it's not just Antifa, it's also BLM together destroying the city, mm. which I think is important. One thing was pretty clear, and only this show put it together, the aging of Ted Wheeler. Mm -hmm. I have never seen somebody age faster yes. than a man with 100 plus days of rioting. And there's one other thing I learned from uh, Ted Wheeler that you should probably keep in mind and the country should learn from. You have spent your life not pleasing people. That is true. And <laughs> that has worked for you. And it's every day you don't please anyone. Mm -hmm. And that Ted Wheeler tried to please, and he ends up embarrassed. So the great Gutfeld mantra is, please no one, make no one happy, and the rest of the country can live happily ever after. Mm. I think my wife might agree with that. Okay, good job. Your sidekick does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This is deeply hurtful. I want you to know that I'm spending this weekend crying. Kennedy, this oh, is so your like home. every other weekend. Right. Yes, that's true. You know, Kennedy, whenever we talk about this, you always say, Ted Wheeler is awful, but the alternative is worse. So there's actually, you could, if you say, like, they got to get rid of him, the next choice for mayor is usually, like, a squirrel with a methamphetamine problem. That actually Worst. would be an improvement. Yes. No, the, the, the woman that ran against him, and, and they were neck and neck going into the November election, was actually an Antifa supporter. Right. So maybe they're trying to get him to resign, and they're dum-dums, and they think that the order of succession is just the next person who almost, almost got the most votes in the last election. That's not necessarily how it works. But it's really Really sad to see the city where I grew up and devolve into this. Yeah. And they have been on a, a long, slow decline for quite some time. And it's not surprising. And this is what happens when you try and appease a group of domestic terrorists. Yeah. It, it doesn't end well. And this truly is, and, and I was reading uh, this article today to my 12-year-old daughter, and I was telling her, this is what domestic terrorism is. Yeah. When you're threatening someone's life, when you're threatening to kill someone for a political outcome, when you're trying to scare them into changing their behavior, that's textbook terrorism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, you know, Ari, I've Your daughter's going to have nightmares. I mean, who are you reading to her? Well, she's already living in New York City. So oh. she's like, <laughs> sounds like a vast improvement, Mom. <laughs> if I have kids, I'm never going to read to them. <laughs> Great idea. Good idea. Unless, unless it's on oh. prompter. Yes, of course. <laughs> What's that mean? All right, uh, enough. You. Uh, Ari, okay. 
We all agree that terrorism of any stripe is bad, but for some reason, this type of terrorism is kind of almost yeah. excusable by our mainstream media. Well, of course it is, because the left is tolerant. Mm -hmm. So when you tolerantly threaten to murder somebody, you're still being tolerant. <laughs> yes, that's true. I mean, it just is the cloak that you get to wear when you come from the soft side of the left. Yes. And the press just rolls right along with it. But, you know, all of this nonsense began in Minneapolis after the George Floyd murder. Mm -hmm. The mayor of Minneapolis said the solution was radical love, mm. if you remember that. And yes. then it spread to the summers of love in Portland and Seattle which of course just opened up the floodgates and the doors for the hatred, the looting, the violence, the mayhem, mm -hmm. and the riots. And this is brought to you by the left. And it, I'm glad you condemn it. I'm glad you bring attention to it. And I'm glad the mayor has flip-flopped after 100 nights of riots. Yeah, you know, uh, Tyrus, I'm, I need to ask you, if you were mayor, how would you solve this problem now, or is it too late? Or would you Oh, it, it would have been over a jump. It would have been over a jump. <laughs> Now, first of all, I would have supported my police department from jump. I would have made yep. sure they had raises and, and all the facilities they needed. And I would have had the National Guard in there like that. Like what? Like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there should have been, he had, a, he had a moment though where he should have known that he was on the wrong side of it. If you watch the video when he turns to his, me and my constituents, and there was no one behind him. They all went, <laughs> if you watch that video back when he motions to the back, it was empty chairs. Even, yeah. the, even the sign language guy was like, <laughs> Not me. So, it's on the tape, watch it. But you know, it's that old, that old story, the, the frog and the scorpion. Yeah. Doesn't matter how you carry them or what you promise them, eventually they're gonna sting you. This, this isn't even a political group. They don't have enough depth to have a political agenda. It's just, give me free stuff or I'll burn you down. It, they're just children that need a good old fashioned spanking and, and who better than the boys in blue and our National Guard to get things right down there. But they, they are arrested, but the, D, the DA will not yep. uh, yeah. charge them with anything. So it's a catch and release program. And Mike Schmidt, who's the DA in Portland, has done an incredible disservice to people who live yep. there and businesses in the entire community. And not to mention people who would ever go visit there. Why would you? See, if I was married, be catch and catch. Yes, exactly. Catch and keep. <laughs> catch and keep would be my philosophy. In that. That, that general would have been out. I, but I would be catch and release, but from a bridge. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 a short little bridge, so they land comfortably right. in the water. It is the city of bridges. What? It's the city of bridges. It is a beautiful city of bridges. Lots of fog, too, hard to identify. <laughs> yes, that's, Just speaking, putting that out there. Speaking of hard to identify, what happens, like, in the, okay, so uh, at some point, the, this Antifa thing is gonna die down. How do they get jobs? Do they get jobs? Are these just, do we end up just taking care of these? idiots no so, one's working and yes. now antifa all you have to do is apply for it you get your unemployment plus 300 dollars at least until they're going to happen until at least september yeah so they can't wait or they can't get that bus boy job they aspire to it's not going to happen don't no 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 they, yeah they're, right? don't knock the bus boys i'm sorry i apologize you know what you fox and friends elitists right with your curvy couches <laughs> and your cooking <laughs> segments think you can come up in here and bash the bus boys right yeah and, <laughs> You know, neither Ducey would do that. <laughs> the old one or the other one. <laughs> you, are, you are angry about the bus boys than you are about Antifa. I am. Well, you don't know his backstory. Uh, you don't yes. know his what, years what, of bus boys. I was raised by bus boys. Yes. You were. In the woods. Small Fantastic. <laughs> but well, I'd like to see those adoption papers. We're missing the point, though. These, they're not looking for jobs. Yeah. They get elitists to donate GoFundMe pages. Yeah, they get and, paid. And no, woke, you know what they want to be. You know, they get, so they, there's no point to work. No, 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 no. When they grow up, they all want to be social media influencers. <laughs> That's their job. Well, good luck with that. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.